Hey, Garrett's back again, and we're uh, we're looking at the Bullfrog. I mean, le- this has been there's been a lot of pu- advanced publicity about this. This your collaboration with Richie Horton, you know, really a big deal. This this thing, but I've never seen it before, and here it finally is. Yeah, basically, uh, when you are at your fifties, you start to think, you know, what you will leave behind, <laughs> and and I'm as a ex uh, teacher, you know. I really know how valuable it is to spark eyes, uh, spark some uh, interest in uh, kids' eyes, and actually, teacher can uh, can show entire new path in uh, kids' lives, you know. Yeah. And therefore, yeah, we some had a discussion with uh, Richie Houghton, and we decided to make a synthesizer specifically for education, but sustainable one meaning that uh, you can uh, learn music technology basics of synthesis and then you can take synthesizer to the stage and actually perform on it. So it was a bit of challenge uh, from a development point of view, but uh, yeah, we ended up with Bullfrog, which is uh, made uh, considering uh, first attention span of today's kids, therefore we have color-coded modules, and entire design of the synthesizer is kind of step-by-step going through uh, each uh, stage of uh, classical subtractive synthesis. Yeah. Um, So uh, we start, and this is fully modular synthesizer, so without patch cables patched in, there is no sound on the output. So, and that's made on purpose because semi-modular synth- semi-modular synthesizers they already have some uh, pre-designed uh, signal flow and uh, it can be a little bit misleading when you start teaching uh, music technology because yeah the, the question is so why it is exactly like that and uh, and uh, what actually each module specifically does so on bullfrog you have to patch so basically, we have uh, an oscillator and a mixer. Oscillator features two waveforms, sine wave and uh, pulse wave, and uh, it has uh, wave shaping possibilities, which is pulse with modulation for uh, for um, uh, pulse wave and uh, wave shaping from sine wave to this shark fin wave yeah. on uh, on s- sine wave plus noise generator. So we can say. We have first parameter, which is pitch of this of the uh, like physical parameter of sound is pitch. So we just use oscillator alone and uh, patch it into VCA, and basically by tweaking oscillator uh, knob, big knobs make most change in sound. We can alter the pitch. Likewise, red knobs alter amplitude of the signal, which is another parameter which is uh, typically used in uh, synthesis. And then we can introduce also the filter. And um, again, I have to patch it everything manually. And now we already also have a, have a timbre variations of the sound. So three parameters, pitch, timbre, and amplitude that are like basic building blocks of uh, any sound design, right? So we heard small delay because for more fun, there is delay built in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then always the question, we have only two hands, but we have three parameters to tweak. Therefore, we introduce voltage control. In this case, uh, there are two envelope generators, which can be looping or uh, free running. Oh, so it's function generators, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly and uh, also sample and hold section. Um, so the user manual, yeah, the user manual basically takes you through basics of sound synthesis, why different waveforms sound different, how filters work, how, uh, how synthesizers typically are built. And then we are also test yourself questions, and then we are getting to so every. So you're designing almost the coursework as well, exactly, to a degree. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then we are getting to specific patches, experiments, uh, module by module. You know how sample and hold works, and so on, so on. Patch examples. Perfect. And to make everything easier, we also have voice cards, 
which, yeah. re which replace patch basically. So it re they replace patch, and for instance, this one is a analog sequencer, five-step sequencer. So as I patch the voice card in, it starts running. This one determines BPM. I can engage and disengage gates, adjust pitch of each step, hold manual gate for some uh, variations and so on. Yeah. So, so, so how, I mean, how do you, how do you get this into the edge cap? Because synthesizers have quite a history of being, you know, you always hear of those massive EMS synths that were taken out of educational establishments, but there are not very many stories of synthesizers going into educational yeah. establishments. So that's actually, uh, sorry, <laughs> that's our ambition actually to get back synthesizers, physical synthesizers in schools, not only on after school uh, lessons, but really on institutional level, because we have to admit that uh, 99% of music that kids are listening yeah. is electronic music. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I run some workshops with kids in, in schools and, you know, to see this spark in their eyes when they really get hands on uh, instrument which makes music as they love listening, it changes everything, both for kids and for teachers, because teachers also want their kid, uh, like uh, students, exci be excited about what yeah. they teach. <laughs> uh, exactly. So, I mean, you must be trying to hit as low a price point as possible to be able to make it viable from schools, because most schools, certainly in this country, are, yeah. are troubled with funding issues and mm -hmm. it's hard. That's, of course, long term project, and we start with some uh, with some uh, test uh, test schools in uh, selected areas and see how it works, and so. On. Also, we have a teacher's version, which is Excel. Oh, this nice. Big, like That's already big. collectible, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so teacher can have a really visible tool in front of uh, him, and uh, other uh, and students have, like, uh, each two students have smaller one. Um, I really hope that uh, our government will hear us and, uh, and uh, that really in some not that distant future we'll have more schools schools having bullfrogs well i guess that's the thing having a big name like reggie horton involved is get, helps amplify that whole kind of message as well right so rich i guess uh, sorry <laughs> I, I guess having a big name like reggie horton involved helps amplify that right uh, obviously there's uh, richie he is a big name and uh and uh, you know he also is involved in uh, both making, like, artists at his uh, level, you know, typically are not going to small workshops with kids. But that's not the case with Richie. So we were in Underground Music Academy in Detroit. We run workshop for uh, 12 kids. And, uh, and this example of Richie, that he is uh, one who actually uses this technology to make music and to make money for living and not only to make money, but to be like really situated person, you know, yeah. that's inspiring. And that uh, shows that it's worth investing in uh, electronic music teaching in schools, not only teaching physics, which I really also support because we need engineers that make uh, synthesizers. Right, yeah. Yeah? But uh, you can make money from music and uh, that's very inspiring for kids to see that that uh, people like Richie Hofton are doing the thing. So can 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 regular people buy this, or are you trying to? Uh, are able people are people able to buy Bullfrog sort of put uh, on a personal uh, level, or yeah, is it? Uh, actually, we are, we started selling. Uh, Bullfrog is available right now. The big one is still in development, so it will be available early uh, next uh, year. But uh, but small one, it it's both available for schools with uh, some uh, discount for educational institutions and also any uh, any person who is interested in uh, using the synthesizer yeah can get it straight away and what what are you charging for it uh, for personal use Excuse me? what's your, what's the price for personal uh, the uh, regular price is 500 euros 
but uh, yeah, educational institutions can get uh, that's, significant that's a, discount. That's impressive for something that's so big. <laughs> that's great. And it, does it come with any of the cartridges as yes, standard? Yes, uh, it comes with a sequencer voice card with a acid baseline voice card and uh, one which uh, I do not have here is a sampler looper which basically emulates uh, magnetic tape so you can you, there's a small microphone you can talk into the uh, looper right. and then manipulate speed of it you can have gated uh, loops or uh, free running loops and also ring modulate it with the synthesizer itself to have these robotic voices and now our challenge is to invent lot of creative uses of the synthesizer like make your own ringtone for instance which is right, like really yeah. tangible result so yeah all intention basically was use a synthesizer as a, an example how you connect different disciplines like physics does not end with formulas it actually translates into music technology and into music which is beautiful do you have a big book you keep all your ideas in? Because it must be getting very full up. <laughs> your, your book of ideas must be getting very full up. You have a lot of, a lot of things yes, going uh, on. We already have manual of 80 pages, but uh, what I realized when talk talking with a teacher that we need to make specific lesson plans. Because unfortunately, a lot of teachers, they do not have any background into yeah. music technology and how to teach synthesizers. So yeah, that's our next challenge. And that's uh, almost the hardest part of uh, Bullfrog is not to design it, but it is to make it uh, appealing for uh, teachers and for schools in general, you know. Well, good luck with that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Nick.